So um, breast cancer in the elderly, you, you need to look at the first thing is at the stage of the cancer. If you're talking about early cancer or late, can late stage cancer will be different. Um, one of the things that people nowadays looking at about older people with breast cancer is that it's about late diagnosis. So if they're diagnosed late, and obviously the prognosis will be late. But even within early operable primary breast cancer, there are challenges as well. Um, one, it, it could go either way. One, people might over treat them because they think that older people should not be discriminated. So they treat them very aggressively as in younger patients. So therefore, to avoid ageism, but that could end up over treating some of them. Then the other extreme would be under treating them because they think that older people are frail, they don't have other, uh, they have other concerns and so therefore we don't need to give them aggressive uh, cancer treatment. So uh, as a result of that, my, uh, I have a research program focusing on the early stage uh, operable primary breast cancer. The overarching goal is to optimize the treatment to find the optimal treatment, not under treating them, not over treating them. Um, within that, I look at two perspectives. One is the biology, the other is the older person uh, herself. So for the biology side, um, uh, we've done a lot of work so far which demonstrates that biology of breast cancer actually changes according to age. So younger patients as opposed to older patients have different cancer biology, different pattern. For example, um, we have shown, um, we have looked at uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer in older patients, they are more likely to have ER positive breast cancer, but not only just ER positive, but within the ER positive population, they are, tend to be highly ER rich, so they are more likely to respond very well to endocrine therapy. We've also looked at HER2 positive breast cancer. Um, so um, although patients, older patients who've got HER2 positive disease, um, they seem to have a different biology because even in the absence of aggressive chemotherapy, they seem to have similar survival uh, to the younger patients with HER2 positive disease. And we have demonstrated something very similar in triple negative breast cancer. So what is this telling us? It tells us that there must be other biological mechanisms operating outside or apart from HER2 and triple negative, which means ER, PR, and HER2 negative disease. So we've done a lot of work using uh, big cohorts of cancer patients. We got about one, nearly 1,800 patients older than the age of 70 at diagnosis. We got a comparator cohort, younger patients, around 2,000 patients under the age of 70. So we have characterized their biology using tissue microarrays, constructions from tumor samples collected at surgery, and we're now working on the tumor samples collected at diagnosis using core biopsies, because that would also give us another idea about biology. Bearing in mind that some patients don't have surgery, so therefore if you just focus on the surgical specimens, you will leave out those treated by non-operative treatment. So we're moving the program on to looking at core biopsy samples. As you know, um, uh, biology is only one part of the jigsaw. So the other part is the actual older person. So a 70-year-old might be very fit, might be very frail. And by the same token, a 90-year-old could be very fit and could be frail. So therefore, another st strand of my research program is to look at um, uh, their frailty. So we have a program prospectively recruiting patients and to do comprehensive geriatric assessment using a, a, a CGA2 validated uh, by Arti Haria in her center in America. And, but I don't believe that all the domains or all the elements are relevant at the time of diagnosis of breast cancer, early stage disease. So we're hoping to use some statistical method eventually to tease out which components are relevant in making diagnosis. So we've got a study looking at that and the study uh, also looks at quality of life at diagnosis. We also monitor the short term changes of geriatric domains and also quality of life. So we measure them again at six months. We also have a program looking at decision-making process of the patients because apart from all these factors, biology and also the geriatric issues um, 
patients might make different decisions based on their preferences. So it's important to look at that as well because older people uh, may have different concerns as to compare to younger people and research is still quite lacking. So ultimately, we would then combine these two concepts together. So you can call it like a biogeriatric assessment. Um, so yet you can assess the biology based on tumor samples of the patient, for example, using a centralized laboratory assay, together with some tools to assess their geriatric domains and combine the two together that might give you a tool which would help design treatment. And then you, we can use this decision tool to advise patients in regarding prognosis, regarding survival, regarding quality of life. Okay, I, I could come on to some challenges in terms of research based on what I have just mentioned, um, uh, which may be difficult to overcome, I must say, um, uh, from a global perspective. For example, um, when you do a good biological study, you got to have good tumor samples, but you also got to have good clinical follow-up data. So the longer term data you got, the better. However, uh, now we have a lot of restrictions legally as well in most countries, in, in Europe, for example. So um, uh, we're now no longer able to use uh, new patient samples without consent. Right? So if we go down this route, and we have to because of the legal framework, then we would not be able to get tumor samples from a consecutive series of patients. Um, if we go back historically, which we we are allowed to do that with ethics approval. But the problem with that is not many centers will have that sort of archive of samples over so many years. So that might restrict the capability to validate um, your data, for example. And there might also be the issue about the age of the samples, which might make laboratory analysis more challenging. Another thing which I think we need to look at, apart from looking at tumor biology and looking at the geriatric domains, is when we think about a patient uh, with early operable breast cancer, whether they should have surgery or not. Very often we think about s surgical fitness. When we come across a fra frail patient, we send them to see the anesthetist um, to assess whether they are fit for an anesthetic but often we leave out um, the potential uh, of the geriatrician in assessing them. And that's part, part and partial of the second strand of my research. But this is quite an important thing because it, within the mindset of most surgeons or breast surgeons, um, the first person they'll think about when they need to assess a patient who are frail uh, for breast cancer surgery, they send them to the anesthetist. And, but within SIOC, for example, we would put a lot of emphasis on the role of the geriatricians. Actually, they can do a lot more.